630 at KGLC. We have 78 degrees. I'm Kim. Going to be another hot day here in Miami. And it's day five of the Blitz Countdown. I, I have looked at other jobs. Um, I don't think it's really soaked in. I've, I've been in denial about losing my job. <laughs> I, I just keep saying this, it's not happening. It's, I didn't think it would ever really close down. I thought it would just pass and it didn't. <laughs> I'm Rocky Flick. I'm the CEO of Blitz USA. Just ones and twos today? Well, you're not too busy then, are you? I just love Yeah. No, that's too bad. Blitz is a manufacturer of gas cans. We've been around for over 50 years. Uh, how did, <laughs> how did it come up? We today? have been a market leader for over a decade. We've had 75% of this market approximately. We make about 15 million cans a year before we had to declare bankruptcy and the market's about 20 million. The, the initial shock uh, when Blitz announces that they're gonna close up, it's, it's really kind of unbelievable, you know, for the amount of uh, business and production that they've, they've done over the years. Been a thriving, thriving company here in our community. Good afternoon, this is the KGLC Noon Show, and I'm Kimberly Barnes along with Larry Heston, and uh, this is a special Noon Show, Larry, isn't it? We are going to be talking about Blitz Manufacturing and uh, the issue of about 120 jobs that we will be losing in about another week, and it has a high impact on our community, Kim, and we want to talk a little bit about that. We have a lot of special guests. We have uh, Amanda Emerson from Blitz. Bring us up to date on Blitz and the loss of the 120 jobs. Sure. Well, I'll start with explaining kind of the Blitz history with our product liability cases. Um, for about the last 10 years, we've been experiencing... About 10 years ago, Blitz was, was faced with some of our first lawsuits that claimed that our cans were exploding. This was usually in a, in a case where a person was pouring gas on a fire, accelerating the fire, or starting a fire with gasoline. In the first several years, it was just a, a case or two or a few cases. And then in the more recent years, there have been more and more cases until it got to be enough cases that we couldn't really fight them all and couldn't get uh, adequate insurance for our company. All right. Here we go to the Rotary Club. Finally made the big time. I get to speak at the Rotary. I don't believe most of the people in the community have any idea other than just assuming something went wrong with Blitz and they're leaving. Having no idea how hard the company worked to get through these financial problems. Um, and I hope that story can get out. What I'm really asking you today to do is, is understand the costs of society and the benefits to the lawyers that are happening. These plaintiff's lawyers, the ones that have my cases, are multimillionaires. And I have deep empathy for the people that are being hurt. They get a very small portion, so this isn't about the accidents as much as it is about money and how the lawyer community has taken money from society, not just me, but you people, in the, in the form of higher prices of things like gas cans and in the form of the loss to the community when, when it loses a plant like this. Now, ask yourself, who are the other victims? There's a lady that works for me at Blitz. Her husband's dying of cancer. Blitz has been a proud company to offer benefits of health care, and he's gotten good care. But because we're self-insured, come July 31st, she has no insurance. I, 
I do feel a lot of pressure, and I do feel like there's, I don't feel like there's more pressure on me than my husband because he's sick and he has so much to deal with anyway, and I try to keep him from having to deal with any, any more than what he's got to deal with. This is the home we all invested in that we're hoping we don't end up losing. Um, I, I will be losing my insurance. Nick was diagnosed, my husband, with stage four colon cancer. Um, my husband does have Medicare. He does not have prescription coverage. When he, when he goes to the doctor, it'll only cover 80% of our bills, which a chemotherapy treatment is $4,000 a treatment. I met Nick at Blitz USA. We both worked there. We were very good friends, so he was actually the last person I ever thought I would marry. <laughs> hey, Nick. Are you ready to come and hook your uh, TPN on? First night I seen her, I was on machine number 13 with gas cans, <laughs> five gallon gas cans. We weren't even on the same shift then. No, we was on different shifts. When did you finally know that uh, Trish was the right one? First time I seen her, yeah. It took me a long time to talk to her though, it made me really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, I've been in human resources, that type of work, for many, many years, 25 to 30 years, and it's the hardest thing I've ever had to do. On June the 10th, Rocky Flick and I went meeting to meeting all day long, telling groups of employees they will lose their job. And then right behind that, I got to be the bearer of the news that their benefits are ending too. So to make that a little bit clearer, August the 11th, I'm going to send more than 400 lives into the community with no health insurance. And you don't see about them in the newspaper and you don't see them, uh, you don't see the effects that they'll have. This whole community is, is a victim in this case. It's 8 o'clock, top of the hour. We'll have your state, local, and national news coming up. And uh, remember, we need rain and a miracle for those at Blitz. Keep your prayers going up. Okay. How long have you, have you worked here? 34 years. Yeah. years, all right. Wow. I, I like to retire from here, but it don't look like I'm going to make it, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to miss uh, watching people grow in their jobs. We put a high premium on, on learning and being open and trying new things, and I'm, I'm gonna miss seeing personal growth. We've got we have jobs uh, posted in the break room that everybody's been signing up for. Um, a, lot of, a lot of those jobs we are not qualified for. I believe that uh, a lot of the people that are losing their jobs are, are gonna have to leave here to seek other employment. And, it's going to break up some families. A lot of people may have to take jobs further away. Everyone's signing up for them. We don't know whether we're going to get them. Because we are in a very competitive job market right now. There are so many people laid off, so many people looking for work, and we want you to know what you have to offer an employer. Probably the most outrageous point is the fact that Blitz is going to close its doors when it manufactures a great product that's needed by most Americans. <laughs> <laughs> And the truth is, there's absolutely no design modification that Blitz could have made or could ever make that would make it safe to pour gasoline on an open flame. It just can't be done. So the lawyers that are suing us, they, ha they have a theory that the, the gas vapor, when somebody pours it on a fire, goes up inside the can, and the can explodes, hurting the person. And it's been our, our position that, that 
if you're pouring gas on a fire, the gas is gonna explode and it's most likely gonna be outside the can, but there's no way to protect somebody from pouring gas on a fire. And, and that's what it's about. It's, it, they say we should put devices on our cans to keep them from exploding. And I'm here to tell you, it's never gonna be safe to pour gasoline on a fire. You know, the allegation that a flame arrestor would somehow improve the safety of the product is just patently false. Um, for many, many years, Blitz looked into and investigated what was happening with respect to these accidents when people were pouring gas on the fire. And, and what Blitz and its expert determined is that incorporation of a flame arrestor would actually result in more injuries that human factors experts indicate that people would have a false sense of security, that they now think it would be safe to pour gas on a fire because this safety device has been incorporated into a gas can. What they have is a substantially disfigured plaintiff. And when there's a substantially disfigured plaintiff, people feel an emotion to help that person out that's been so badly damaged. And those injuries are so significant, some people want to give them money regardless of the liability of the gas can manufacturer. If we incorporate child resistant features into a gasoline container and we do a great job of educating the consumer on the proper use and storage of gasoline and gasoline containers, that's going to benefit and reduce the actual gasoline related injuries and in fact the data supports that. These are tags that we put on every gas can sold. Um, it's not just Blitz USA, it's, uh, a, it's a joint effort between everybody in the gas can manufacturing industry. Um, on this particular tag, there are six different versions. This is Austin Bailiff, and he was a kid that was severely burned with gasoline when he was attempting to ignite a glove on fire, uh, just to see what it would look like burning. In a matter of, I don't know, maybe a nanosecond, I was fully inflamed from head to toe. I'm screaming at my friend to go get a blanket, you know, help me, help me, I'm on fire, dude. And my friend's just frozen, scared stiff. He hasn't blamed a gas can, he, um, he takes full responsibility and, and then goes above and beyond and has dedicated his life to making sure that others don't get hurt like he did. Because they don't want this to happen to anybody else. They don't want other families to have to suffer like they have. And Austin speaks with kids every day and tells them this behavior is not okay. I was dumb, I shouldn't have done this. He's just awesome and we're so grateful that he speaks out um, to really relate to kids and to parents um, to let them know that this isn't an okay behavior. That last day is going to be hard. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be hard leaving. Um, it's going to be hard leaving everything that I've worked really hard for. <laughs> when we make gas cans, um, we're all, uh, we're mothers and fathers working out there. We're not just employees. We're mothers and fathers taking care of our families and um, so we try to make everything safe. Everybody works together. Um, everybody's a good team. We all know what to look for. We don't want to put things in someone's hands that we wouldn't put in our own child's hands. So, uh, we kind of feel like we're being punished for uh, our products being misused. So uh, now we can't take care of our families. As I look back at this warehouse and how empty it is, it's, it's, it's very sad. 
that a company that could fill this thing up in, in a matter of weeks and, and maintain the type of inventory that it would take to serve the nation, and you can't do nothing about it, and your company can't do nothing about it, it's, it's discouraging, it's disgusting. 7.30 with 78 degrees right now at KGLC. Gonna be another hot one and we need rain. Pray for rain and also today is the final day for the Blitz closing. Remember those families in your prayers and pray for a miracle for them too. It is a hard day, especially walking out here and there's literally nothing on the floor. It's all over here in staging and, and that's when it really hit me. Yeah, well, today is our final luncheon. We're gonna have have uh, food together and go our separate ways. Uh, so I, I was wanting to gather everybody together one last time to connect, and then this is kind of the end. Even even as we're shutting down today, the lawyers are meeting in Chicago under the name of the organization, the American Association for Justice. And so they're, they're very well organized and they, they uh, meet and they have workshops trying to teach each other how to sue companies like ours. I don't want um, people to think that it's okay to uh, misuse things and be rewarded um, because uh, other people see that and then it becomes a chain. <laughs>